I'm Brian Penny and I'm a marine ecologist and this is my job. Ecology and the other side of my job, the marine invertebrate zoology, has something to offer everybody, even though they both seem like small subfields. And I try to bring that excitement to students just to get them to see how much is packaged in each of those topics. It may have one title like invertebrate zoology or ecology, but it's also how animals work and how the, the world works. Why are the waves coming in on this angle and how is that going to affect what critters live there and what critters live over here? How does that generate the patterns that we see every day? And those are very fundamental questions, no matter whether you're going into the field as a specialist or you're just a person walking around in the world interested in what's around. Yeah. Those are your major types of seaweed you're going to see. There might be a couple other, you can just put those as seaweed one, seaweed two. Keep going straight. What I want to work with the students on is seeing the big picture. You can go to other programs and become a marine biologist and take nothing but marine biology courses. But then why are you doing it? And what context does that fit in? And how does your work apply to developing nations? Those are the sorts of questions that you might want to ask. And that's more what a liberal arts education gives you, is to understand not only the basics of what you're doing, but the context of what you're doing. Yeah, these are the Japanese shore crabs. And you can tell, tell them apart from the other crab species because they have this box-like shape. And the other two crab species around here will either be green and trapezoidal, or they'll be red and a little bit oval with points, and that's how you tell those apart. <laughs> Working in the field is crucial to education in general, but it's a cornerstone of a liberal arts education, and, and that might seem contradictory to what most people think of. Liberal arts is the great books you sit down, you read, you think, you talk. But liberal arts is being able to tie things together from different angles and having the big picture. And part of that big picture is coming out here and maybe standing in the wind and the rain and actually looking at the organisms that we've talked about in the classroom and understanding and recognizing what they are, then understanding our limits to be able to identify them. And when we talk about diversity in the classroom and talk about the arguments about measuring biodiversity and what that tells us about the world, you also need to know what it's like to put a ruler down and try to count the number of organisms in that space to understand the limits of our understanding when we're trying to apply the models and data that are coming out in the literature. Um, these are spider orbit worms, not barnacles. If you look at it, the shell's spiral. It's not just a circle like the barnacles are. That one. Yeah, yeah. There's something amazing about having someone come in and not know your topic, and maybe not know anything about the topic, and they're not sure why they're there except as a requirement. And then to watch them develop and to gain the skills and to understand the knowledge, and then to make the next step where they start making connections to what they're interested in, where they can see, wait a second, I've always wondered this when I went out on the shore in the summer, why there was more seaweed over here than over there. When they start making those connections, you know that they're on their own and, and they're now capable of applying the information to their own questions. And to me, that's the most exciting part of teaching.